Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And well, uh, so I'm really happy to come here. And actually, just last night, I noticed that I made the list of invited speakers of CDFM, but, but actually I'm a PC member and <laughs> organizing member, so what does <laughs> invited mean? I'm, I'm not sure probably self-invited speaker, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm very happy to come here and I thank all local organizers for uh, setting up this great conference. Sorry, I, I can only attend CDFM for today, but uh, I'll try to give a talk about my recent research on uh, strengths of lamp system for pairs. So, okay. So to hear today's contents and uh, so target is, well, well-studied topic uh, on Liebert mathematics, the strengths of Lamsey's theorem in second order arithmetic. And we'll just argue everything within RC0 or above. And well, we'll just switch the notation as usual, RT and K means for any calling from N, N tuples from natural numbers to K, there is an infinite set H, which is constant on N tuples from that set, that's uh, RT and K. We call that H as a homogeneous, P homogeneous set. And the notation RTN means for any K, RTN K, and RT means for any N, RTN, and so on. And, well, usual argument. I mean, by, by definition, we can always uh, say that RTN K is stronger than RTN prime K prime if N prime is smaller, and K prime is smaller, and just use RTN K twice, then RTN K implies RTN K plus one. And within now say zero, RTN plus one two implies RTN for all colors. Uh, that's, that's not so difficult. And SA0 proves RTN K for any standard N and K, fixed N and K, uh, by just formalizing usual proof. And by formalizing judge result about the RT32, there's a computable calling for triples whose homogeneous set always computes a zero jam. Formalization of that result uh, implies that RT32 implies SA0 over SA0. So classically what we have known is so RC0 proves RT12, which is a trivial statement, and RT1 is stronger, RT22 is stronger than that, RT2 is stronger than that, and RT32, and above those are all equivalent to AC0. So that's the uh, classically known things about the strength of Lambert's theorem in the form setting of second, setting of reverse mathematics. And okay, so computability theoretic strength of RT22 is deeply analyzed and uh, many things are known. This is just a, just a small number of those things. And uh, well, but anyway, Specker showed that RC0 does not imply RT22 because, well, there is a computable calling for pairs which has no computable homogeneous set. And well, actually RC0 plus RT22 implies DNR even. And RT22 does not imply RT32 by set upon, by showing the corner avoidance avo theorem for lambda itself for pairs. And actually, nowadays it's known that the low two basis theorem holds for RT22 or RT2. And moreover, well, actually, kind of a corner avoidance, well, DNR2 avoidance method. In induced that RC0 plus RT22 does not imply WKL0. And of course, many, many more words, like in Dennis book, there are so many results related to this kind of topic. And so the, on Omega model, we, we can see that, well, RT12, oh. well, okay, RT12, well, RT22 is strictly stronger than RT12, and RT32 is strictly stronger than that, and the RT22 is incompatible with 
WTL0. That's known. But so today, I try to focus on the first order consequences of Ramsey's theorem. And well, actually, first order consequence of ACA0 is well known. It's PA, it's the same as piano arithmetic. And the uh, first order part of RC0 is just I sigma 1. So the question is what's the first order consequences of Ramsey's self of pairs, RT22 and RT2? That's the question. Okay, and so in general, so I'll try, today I'll try to focus on two ways to study the first order consequences, or first, first order part of second order theory. So the first technique is to show some, well anyway, anyway to determine its first order consequences, you, we usually show some conservation result. So for example, For example, this one, well, uh, yeah, like RC0 and WK0 are pi 1, 1 conservative extension of I sigma 1, means uh, RC0 or W, the first order part of RC0 or WK0 is the same as sigma, the system of sigma 1 induction. And to show this kind of pi 1, 1 conservation, kind of a general most famous technique is uh, using so-called omega extension property. So if, well, let's say T0 and T1 are extensions of RC0 and T1 extends T0. And if, okay, if two theories satisfy the following condition, for any countable model of, model MS of T0, weaker one, and for any AA, well, it's a parameter, set parameter from S, there exists uh, some uh, S bar, which is a subset of power set of M, such that while A is a member of S bar, and M and the pair M and S bar is a model of T1, then once this model theoretic condition holds, then one can always say that T1 is a pi 1 conservative extension of T0. And all these results can be proved by that way. So any model of I sigma 1 with second parameters, so second order version of I sigma 1, countable model of I sigma 1, well, okay, sorry. Here I said, <laughs> uh, uh, basically contains, I, I'll say zero, but well, let's say just T0 contains just I sigma 1 is enough, actually for this, this type of discussion. So any countable model of I sigma 1 can be extended to, can be expanded to a model of, extended to a model of RC0 or WK0 even uh, by using like Harrington's forcing argument and so on. And if we modify the base system to B sigma 2, still the same argument works, but well, with a little more work, but one can prove this. And AC0 is a pi 1 conservative extension of piano arithmetic or the second order version of full arithmetical induction system. Now, by just showing omega extension property, essentially just collecting all arithmetically definable sets on a model, of, countable model of PA, then it's a model of AC0. So that's a pi 1 conservation proof. So this is kind of a well known method, argument. And another, another way, which is a main topic this talk, uh, another way to analyze the first order consequences of a second order theory is, uh, is using cuts of non-standard models. So now, as, well, consider the following condition. So assume that T0 and T1 Satisfy this, satisfy this, what's this? For any countable non-standard model of T0, and for any pi 0n formula with parameters from M and S, so pi 0n statement in this MS, then there exists a cut 
I cut or initial segment of M I such that well the number of parameters are all member of I and the pair I and the coded set M of I coded set M of I is defined as this uh, coded set M over I is a restriction of S to I means all the intersection of H and I for any H in a, with a member of S. So this, this pair, I and the code is set M over I is a model of T1 plus this C. But, well, okay, we restrict the model to, we, we restrict the first order part to I, so second order parameters is just restricted to I. Okay, so if this uh, model static property holds, then T1 is a pi 0 m plus 1 conservative extension of T0. And well, pi 0 m plus 1 tilde means actually, uh, well, pi 0 m plus 1 formula with uh, set parameters or universal closure of, of pi, 0, pi 0 m plus 1 formula with set parameters. And so here, well, in the previous version, we, we only need to make a model of T1. But here, we have to make a model of T1 plus some fixed formula. So preserving, so for, for a given formula phi with parameters from M and S, then we have to make a model, we have to find a cut of, to be a model of T1 preserving this phi. That's the idea. So this is a kind of a conservation proof uh, by showing, uh, by constructing a model one by one. For, for each switch formula, I want to know is find an extension. Well, actually, not, not extension, it's a cut. But uh, yeah, new model. And OK, to preserve this phi, well, what kind, what kind of technique is needed to preserve phi? That's the question. And actually, so the I is a cut of M. So any pi the one statement is automatically preserved. So something is true in M and S. Some, some pi, pi the one thing is true in M and S. And if the parameter is still in I, then I call this set M over I automatically satisfy that that phi is true. So any cut preserves just pi to one statement phi. And so, so pi two conservation is, well, just making a uh, model of T1. But to preserve pi two statement, well, pi two statement to preserve pi two statement, the easiest way is preserving just the totality of a pi two definable function. And to preserve pi three thing, well, well, one one idea is one one idea to interpret that pi three con, pi three conservation to a combinatorial statement. Uh, well, the idea is preserving the divergence of the form something like a limit of some computable function goes to infinity. And so for pi four and more, the statement get more and more complicated, but still we can control in some sense. And so with this method, well, several classical things about the strengths of uh, strength of B sigma 2 or I sigma 1 is proved in this type of argument, proved by this type of argument. So for example, B sigma 2 is a pi 3 conservative extension of I sigma 1. That's a uh, person of pi and Friedman argument. And I sigma 1 is a pi 2 conservative extension of primitive recursive arithmetic. Oh, sorry, uh, I said the uh, uh, basically, it's I sigma one, but here we consider a weaker system. Well, actually, this type of argument works over elementary functional arithmetic. So above that, still this type of argument works. 
And in fact, uh, one can prove the Fu Pi 1 conserv conservativity by using this type of cuts and so on, cuts of non standard models. So, for example, uh, let's consider this well known theorem again. So, WK0 is a Pi 1, 1 conservative extension of I sigma 1. Well, here, we'll decompose that statement into this, this type. So, for, for each n, WK0 is a Pi 0, 2n plus 1 conservative extension of I sigma 1 for all standard n. That means WK0 is a Pi 1, 1 conservative extension of I sigma 1. And to show this by using cuts, well, idea is, well, for given a model M of I sigma 1 and some phi of the form pi 0, 2n, well, one needs to find a cut i so that the pair i and the codicit m over i is a model of wk0, and also i preserves that pi 2n, pi 0, 2n statement. And I'll try to characterize the uh, well, I would try to consider combinatorial condition to find a cut for, for this. And there's actually a so-called general, general argument, so-called indicator argument, to find this kind of thing. So, the, so, so I'll try to introduce the general indicator argument. And I'll go back to this proposition. So, okay, what is the indicator argument, or what is indicators? So let's say, so let's say T be uh, uh, T is uh, just a theory of second order arithmetic, and then a sigma zero definable function on some model of well, so M to be a model of I sigma one or elementary function arithmetic or R C zero anything, and uh, consider sigma zero definable function y from some model, from some, on, on some models, from pairs of numbers to number, uh, instead be an indicator for a theory t if it satisfies these three conditions. Well, the first two, two, two conditions just say that uh, y is a kind of a, some kind of a distance function and bounded. So y of x, y is just bounded by y. And uh, if uh, the interval x prime, y prime uh, covers the interval x and y, then so the distance between x prime and y prime is bigger than the distance between x and y. So that's the idea of uh, the indicator function. Indicator is a kind of a distance function. And if the distance between x and y is big enough, in this sense, y of x, y is bigger than omega, means y of x, y is bigger than n for all standard natural number n, then, and, well, if and only if there exists a cut i, between x and y, so x is a member of i, and y is not a member of i, and the pair i, the codicet m over i, is a model of t. And so the indicator argument is, I think, first introduced by Jeff Pallis, and then, well, Richard K generalized, Richard K and many others generalized that type of argument. And nowadays there are several kind of a, well, sometimes canonical, sometimes, well, kind of a, well, not, not canonical, but there are several good ways to construct indicators. And for example, uh, if you consider the distance factor y of x, y defined as max n uh, starting from x, one can apply exponential n many times and still smaller than y, well, this type of distance function is an indicator for WK0 star. WK0 star means WK0 minus sigma 1 induction, roughly speaking. And if you consider uh, the, the next one, y of x, y is a max n such that, well, any coloring on the interval x, y 
uh, n tuples from interval from h y to 2 has a homogeneous set z, which is relatively large, means the kinetic of z is bigger than minimum z. So this is purely combinatorial statement, but this value forms a, an indicator for ACA0. So y of x, y, uh, so the distance between x and y is bigger than omega in this sense, then there's always a model of ACA0 between them. And once you find an indicator, then one can know many things about the theory. So here's the basic properties of, indica properties of indicator. So if I is an indicator for a theory T, then for all standard N, T, T can always prove that for any S to this Y, the distance between H and Y is bigger than N. And and actually, it covers all piezo 2 con part of the piezo 2 consequences of T, meaning T is, a, T is always a piezo 2 conservative extension of elementary functional arithmetic or primitive recursive arithmetic plus the statement of this form. For any x that is y, the distance between x and y is bigger than n for all standard n. And OK, so let's say capital F y n of x uh, is minimum y, such that y of x, y is bigger than n. Then this function bounds all pi 2 consequences of t, meaning if y is an indicator for theory t, and t proved some pi 2 statement, for, well, uh, pi 2 statement, well, actually t theta can be sigma 1 still, then there's this n such that t proves for any s, one can always find y below f y n x, f y n of x, satisfying theta h y. So indicator fully characterizes the pi two consequences of a theory. Okay, so now we we'll consider we want to construct an indicator function to be a model of this. So WK0 plus some fixed formula phi. So that's uh, this one. Uh, to find an indicator for WK0 plus phi, well, we will define some combinatorial relation while well, using, well, Actually, later, I would like to formalize this type of argument by forcing, so I would just use the notation from forcing. So H WK0 M P in that degree, uh, well, which can be argued within RC0 still. Oh, by the way, uh, so we write parameter phi to be the max of number, param number parameters in phi. OK, so for given a pi 0 2 M formula phi, and a finite set z and finite number m. Well, first, x, say, 0 forces phi. If phi is just pi 0, 0, and phi, is, phi holds, and the uh, kinetic of z is bigger than 2, and all the parameters in phi is bounded by minimum z. So this is the base case. And x n plus 1 forces phi if, well, n plus 1 is greater than n. Well, n, n is just the complexity of phi. And two more conditions. So the first condition is for so-called semi lateral card to be a model of WK0. If m is greater than n, then for any partition of z, such that the number of partitions the number of partition is the uh, smallest element of z, and so all the member of z0 is smaller than z1, and all the member of z1 is smaller than z2, and so on. So just, just kind of a split end of z. 
Oh, oh sorry. So this is not Z. I'm sorry. This, is, this should be X. I mean, this X. Uh, so so all the, consider any partition of X into L many pieces, but the number of pieces is smaller than minimum X. Well, there's this some I such that ZI forces phi in the sense of M. So one level down. Yes? So H is, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, uh, so, so here, well, I, I don't know which is better, but this is H, so this, oh. all these are Z. <laughs> so Z and H is the same thing. And, uh, uh, well, so let say, say, so, say all H. Uh, so let H be a finite set of natural numbers. And then define this notion. Okay, the third one is, okay, if phi is the form for any, so for phi is, phi is phi to 2n, so let's say phi is the form for any x, this y, theta xy. So theta is pi 0, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2 actually. Then, well, for any a below minimum x, there's this some new set Z and B below minimum Z such that, well, two, two things are false. So first, uh, the theta AB is false at the level M. And if M is still bigger than N, then Z also forces the original phi again. So that's the third condition. And uh, so this is all the things uh, definable in a pi zero zero or sigma zero zero way. So actually, once we fix phi, then, well, the relation that H M forces phi can be expressed by a uh, pi zero zero formula uniformly, uniformly meaning uniformly uh, in H and M. And then, so this is all kind of a combinatorial statement once phi is fixed. And then, consider distance function y phi W J zero A B to be a maps M such that while well, the interval A B M forces phi. Then this is always an indicator for W J zero plus phi. And on the other hand, for each for each standard m and for each phi, such that, well, m is greater than n, some, well, basic knowledge can show that R0 proves that uh, for any x, one can find y such that the distance between y, y phi of x, y is bigger than m. So that means Taking any model of R C zero, one can find any no standard model of R C zero. One can find the distance h y. Uh, one, one can find one can find two elements h and h and y whose distance is bigger than all standard m. Means. means this situation holds for all pi 0 to n things. So t0 to be a model of r0 and t1 to be a model of uh, t0 to be, t0 is r0 and t1 is w0, then this type of statement holds for all pi 0 to n formula phi. And 
And so, okay, we can say this. For any n, wk0 is a pi 0, 2 n plus 1 conservative extension of i sigma 1, or i say 0, i sigma 1. And, and so, this is a kind of a new way to show power 1 conservation for wk0 over r say 0. And, well, so the idea is interpreting all first order consequences into some kind of a finite combinatorial statement and put all those things within weaker system, I'll say so. So, and later, later on, I'll, uh, I'll show that this argument can be reformulated by some false idea for generic cuts. Okay, so, so I'll try to use these, these two types of conservation proof today. And so now I'll try uh, to apply the, these types of techniques to Ramsey's theorem for pairs. Okay, so what's the first order strength of Ramsey's theorem or Ramsey's theorem for pairs? Okay, so, well, first go back to general Ramsey's theorem case. So RT12 is provable within RC0, and RT1 is equivalent to B sigma 2, and RTN2 is equivalent to AC0 if n is greater than 3. So that means RC0 plus RT12 is a pi 1 conservative extension of I sigma 1. RC0 plus RT1 is a pi 1 conservative extension of B sigma 2. And RC0 plus RTN2 or RC0 plus RTN uh, R, or is, sorry, <laughs> from conservative extension of PA. And uh, of course, the list is RT22 and RT2. And Jeff Hurst showed that RT22 implies P sigma 2 and RT2 implies P sigma 3. And so that George Strayman famous argument, well, famous paper showed, showed that, well, with I sigma 2 or I sigma 3, one can show the pi 1 conservation for RT22 or RT2. So R C0 plus I sigma 2 plus RT22, or WK0 plus I sigma 2 plus RT22, are pi 1 conservative extensions of I sigma 2. And with I sigma 3, one can prove pi 1 conservation for RT2. So R C0 plus I sigma 3 plus RT2, or W K0 plus I sigma 3 plus RT2 are pi 1 conservative extension of I sigma 3. So the first order strength is in between, so the first order part of R C0 plus RT22 is in between B sigma 2 and I sigma 2. And the first order part of R C0 plus RT2 is in between B sigma 3 and I sigma 3. And recently, there are several developments about this type of study. And uh, so, John Simon Yan showed that RC0 plus RT22 does not imply I sigma 2. And then uh, I worked with Pate, and we showed that WK0 plus RT22 is a pi 3 conservative extension of I sigma 1. And this is more recent result with. Ted Sleiman, WK0 plus RT2 is a pi 1 conservative extension of B sigma 3. And uh, so first, uh, I'll try to focus on the first order part of RT2. So RC0 plus RT2 is a pi 1 conservative extension of B sigma 3. And this is an easy consequence of, of this type of lemma. So starting from a model of B sigma 3, M MS be a model of B sigma 3, and consider calling P in S, uh, P is a calling from um, pa pairs of, I mean, <laughs> pa pairs of members of M to K. And then there's this uh, set, well, actually external set, G, such that, well, P restricted to G, Pairs from G 
is constant. I mean, uh, so this G is a homogeneous set from outside. And G is unbounded in M. And this G still preserves B sigma 3. And this lemma can be proved by, well, by reformulating the, the low two basis theorem. So any current P has a low two homogeneous set, and low two homogeneous set preserves B sigma 3 in general. Well, but the construction usually refers to double jump. So we will control that the number of references small number of time to word everything within B sigma 3. Otherwise, usual primitive recursion with zero double jump needs I sigma 3. So we use usual Brodkin argument uh, and made the number of references smaller. And, well, with, with some more techniques, actually. But anyway, we can do this kind of thing. And in fact, one can find G as a delta 3 definable set in M. So it's a delta 3 definable solution. Delta 3, internal delta 3 definable low two homogeneous set, essentially. So it's a kind of a very direct proof for power conservation. And so because of that, this judgment uh, provides some feasible, I mean, canonical polynomial proof, proof interpretation for this power one conservation result, meaning if something is provable, some power one statement is provable from RC0 plus RT2, then, well, just by some polynomial proof transformation, one can obtain a proof of the same power one statement within B sigma three. So for RT22, this is still open. So it's RC0 plus RT22. So this is in between B sigma two and I sigma two, and it's strictly weaker than I sigma two. And so it said, uh, power on conservative extension of B sigma two or not, that's still open. But the indicator fence uh, answer this question up to pi three level. So R C zero plus R T two two is a pi three conservative extension of I sigma one. And uh, well actually B sigma two and I sigma one has the same pi three part. So this is, this is the same as saying that RC0 plus RT22 is a pi three conservative extension of B sigma two. And this is proved by, well, cut argument, indicator argument, by originally from Paris. Uh, so the idea is considering uh, so-called dense set. So a finite set H C is zero dense if it's relatively large. I mean, the cardinality of H is bigger than minimum H. And the final set H is set B M plus one dense if one can apply lambs itself for pairs once, and then it's solution Y. Well, solution Y means Y is a P homogeneous set and M dense. And this type of definition, M density, can be expressed by a sigma zero zero formula. And okay, so Bobby and Wyman showed that. Well, or well, I would say reformulate Paris's idea, and they showed that if M H is a model of RC zero, and interval A B is M dense for any standard M, then there's just a cut I between A and B such that I and the code is M over I is a model of W J zero plus R T two two. So this cell means that uh, so M density forms an indicator for WJ0 plus RT22. Okay, on the other hand, well, the, well, similar to the case for the conservation proof for WJ0, one can show that 
for any fixed m, I'll say that proves that this statement, mph22, meaning any infinite set contains m dense set for all standard m. So that means uh, for fixed standard number m, indicator function is total in in, in, in any of any model of our system. And well, in the paper with Pate, we show this kind of finite combinatorics using a lot of infinite combinatorial arguments and so on. But later on, now we know that actually more direct combinatorial argument for this type of theorem. So in fact, X is just, if you know alpha largeness notion, if X is Omega to 300 to, to 300 to m large, then x is m dense, and this is provable within our zero. And and this can be shown by just finite combinatorics. Uh, well, by the way, this is a recent joint work with Kovacs. Well, uh, this guy. <laughs> I always trouble with this name, <laughs> but. Uh, He's my friend, <laughs> but still I can't remember his name with the right pronunciation. Sorry. <laughs> Kovojic. <Kovo> Good. <laughs> okay. And okay. So because so anyway. So this means that uh, density forms an indicator for W K zero plus R T two two. And the totality of that indicator function is provable within R T zero. So as a corollary, W K zero plus R T two two is a pi zero two conservative extension of R T zero. And well, actually, the result with Pate is for pi three. And we want to know higher level pi on one part of R T two two. For that, um we need to generalize the previous argument. And here I've tried to introduce indicator argument, a uh, combination of indicator argument and false in. So, okay, so to analyze the pi zero n consequences for n greater than three, we will sharpen the previous indicator argument provided by m density. Then this is again joint work with Kovodzic, I'm still not confident. Kovodzic. Difficult. And team lot one. Uh, so uh, this, uh, they are actually in Walsall. Walsall. So the, this is joint work with logicians log, 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 in Walsall. And uh, so, okay. So here we'll consider a non standard model of RC0 with a cut. So okay, let's say so M be a triple, uh, the first order part. Well, here I, I use this notation. So the natural number considered in M and S is always a second order part, and U is a cut of M. So it's a model, kind of a model of R C zero plus saying that U is a proper cut. And the third one. So for any M. MPH22 holds means for any infinite set and for any M in U, there's M dense set. So, so here we add new new predicate U, but actually any non-standard model of R C0 has an expansion for such U. But just put in well, so understanding u as a standard cut. And then, as I shown before, so I'll say zero proves that mph22 for all standard m, so if u is just a set of all standard Dutch number, then this is good. So now, within this structure m, consider a post set pn, well, some order defined as this. So, okay, so P is a set of all Y, which, which is all M finite, M finite subset of M, such that, well, Y is A dense for some A above U. 
So u is a cut. So a is not a member of u means a is bigger than all members of u. And uh, the order of this posit is just the uh, inclusion. Inclusion order and the smaller set is strong. Then, well, this is a post, this is actually unbounded post set. And for given a, it, once we can, once, once we get a generic filter G on this post set P, generic filter of course from outside, then define so-called generic cut IG as a soup of all minimum Y, where Y is a member of G. So this forms a cut and usually a proper cut. Then, well, we, we've tried M square bracket G as a second order structure defined by this IG, IG and codicet M over IG. This is a model of WK0 plus RT22. And, uh, well, the reason why this always forms a model of WK0 plus RT22 is essentially the same as Palisade's original argument still. So, in Palisade's argument, well, it's rather hard to explain the entire construction. But here, the idea is using, using density one by one and approximate the model of WK0 plus RT22 by each, for each instance of RT22, that's the idea. And uh, here, instead of using density, we'll use generality of this, this pulse set and construct a model of WK0 plus RT22. Actually, any, any generic filter provides a model of WK0 plus RT22. And so, okay, so then we can consider a syntactical part of this false in. So what's that? Well, okay, so the generic cut is just constructed by a soup of all minimum elements. So, so for atomic, uh, I, I didn't say that this is atomic, but for, for atomic formula C, well, C A, C A in capital A is just a just, the, the, just understand this, so C, A, and A will restrict to just max, maximum X. And all number parameters should be below minimum X. In this situation, we can say that X forces some atomic statement. And conjunction, disjunction, negation is, are defined as usual. And X forces some, it's a essential statement, there is some number X, CH holds means for any extension Y, that this C extending Y, and there's just some number A smaller than minimum Z, and Z falls its CA. And for the set, oh, there's no condition, just, just for, any, uh, for any extension Y, that is C extending Y, and there's just some set A, but subset of zero much C, that's the Z falls its CA. So this is a false statement, but uh, so for a given L2 formula C, X false C is, oh sorry, I forgot to add U, but sigma zero zero with predicate U. So this is sigma zero zero with a new predicate symbol U for standard card, standard card. And then, now with this, Syntactical formalization of this false end, one can at least characterize the pi zero m part of WK0 plus RT22 because, well, by this theorem. So WK0 plus RT22 is a pi zero m plus one conservative extension of RC0 plus U is a cut, plus if C is true, then there's this sum edge such that edge falses C. Well, there's this H in posted P such that H falses C, that's the real statement. Why this is true? Well, because, well, using uh, 
Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the slide, slide preparation is not great. Uh, so using this uh, cuts property here. So for any non standard model of R C zero M S, and for any phi, well, we want to find the cut I to be a model of uh, to be a model of W J zero plus R T two two plus phi. So here, well, if if you consider a posted P defined by density, then one can always uh, then then any generic cut already a model of W J zero plus R T two two. So to preserve phi, we want to force phi. Uh, to preserve phi, we want to force phi. So, okay, so if we have this type of statement, if phi is true, then phi can be forced. Then if phi is true, then one can preserve phi to be a model of W. One can construct, a, one can find a generic cut to be a model of W plus RT plus RT22 and preserving phi, uh, preserving C. So, so if C is true, then C can be forced by some condition, means one can find a generic, generic cut to be a model of W plus RT plus RT22 preserving this C. So that means, this statement, this this statement characterizes a pi zero m plus one part of w j zero plus r t two two. And here, of course, we use this new predicate symbol u. So we try to eliminate u to find a real first order characterization. So for that, we'll combine density notion for r t two two. And uh, generalized indicator, indicator 10 for WK0 we have used before for the pi 1 conservation for WK0 by indicator argument. So, okay, so let's say phi is a pi 0 2m. And, oh, sorry, so this, is, this should be h again, I'm sorry. So h is a finite set of natural numbers, and m just some natural number. Then, well, all these things are the same as before. So pi, so pi zero zero thing is always false if that, that statement is true and the parameter is all bounded by minimum h. So, I mean, so this is all h. So. And m plus one h m plus one false is phi means well the first and the third condition third condition is the same. And we will add a new condition for density. So if m is greater than n, then for any Carolian neural nets, there's this a p-homogeneous set z such that z m forces c, <laughs> forces phi. So just adding new condition for uh, kind of a largeness notion or indicator notion for wk0 plus phi, we'll get the uh, New indicator for WJ0 plus RT22 plus phi. That's the idea. And then one can say this type of statement can characterize the first order part of WJ0 plus RT22. So, first, WJ0 plus RT22 proves that phi, uh, well, C, if C is true, then that this H such that H M forces C for all. Standard M, which is large enough, I mean large enough compared to the complexity of C. On the other hand, if we consider this type of statement in a non standard model and consider a cut, then we can define a new posit P. Well, it's, it's actually a special part of the previous posit P defined by just density. So define posit P as H such that H A forces C for some A which is not a member of U. Then H forces C for all M for for all M in U, then in the previous foo indicator uh foo forcing argument, it's just forces C. 
So this means, so this H, so H, M forces C for all M in U is enough to be a condition to force C. So that means if M is a model of R C zero plus all question of the question of all these things, then and M is non-standard, then one can obtain a cut, well actually a generic cut, to be a model of W J zero plus R T two two M preserving C because C is forced by some D sets. Well, so here of course the U is considered as a set of all standard natural numbers. So as U is considered as a standard count. So as a consequence, the theorem says that WK zero plus RT two two is a pi zero two M plus one conservative extension of RC zero plus this combinatorial statement. If C is true, then the existence it's M forces C for all standard M and all C from pi zero two N and M is greater than N. So this is a pi 2n plus 1 part of WK0 plus RT22. So one can characterize pi 1 part of WK0 plus RT22 by this way. And all pi 1 consequence of WK0 plus RT22 can be interpreted as a kind of a bounded, finite combinatorial statement. If something is true, then this is all sigma 0, 0. So kind of finite combinatorial statement true. <laughs> So that's, that's the idea. And, okay, so to go back to the original question whether RC0 plus RT22 is a pi 1 conservative extension of P sigma 2 or not. Well, the answer is yes, if all these type of statement is all provable within RC0 plus P sigma 2. But of course that's open. <laughs> but at, at least this is true for the case C is pi 0 2. And that's actually the result with part, so the understanding of the result with part A. So if C is pi 2, then we have pi 3 conservation naturally. And to force pi 2 then, well, force, forcing pi 2 then is just to force the, force in the totality of some function f defined by a pi 0 2 formula. So, okay, so if so to force, to force the pi 0 2 formula of C, uh, or to, to force the totality of F defined by C, just consider an infinite set of this form. So what, what, what we need is if, for, if two members from condition X, X is small X and small Y, such that X is smaller than Y, then F of X is still smaller than Y, and X is dense. Then X already M forces F. X already M forces F is total. And to find such X, one can just find an M then set X from this type of infinite set. A, F of A, F of F of A, F of F of F of A. And that's possible within I sigma 1 by finite combinatorics. So by this sense, one can say that RC0 plus RT22 is a pi 3 conservative extension of I sigma 1. This is a re-understanding of the pi 3 conservation result for w, WK0 or RC0 plus RT22. Okay. And uh, this kind of full inch style reformalization of the conservation result uh, would provide some canonical proof transformation also. So I think I, I'm almost sure for this statement. So there is a canonical polynomial proof transformation between WK0 plus RT22 and I sigma 1 for all pi 3, pi 3 consequences, pi 3 formulas. So that means, for example, if a pi 2 formula for any edge that is why theta xy is provable from WK0 plus RT22, I guess this is a kind of a fast growing function defined by Ramsey's Ramsey type statement. Then one may feasibly extract a primitive recursive function f from the proof so that, well, 
on, on omega, there's, for any x, there's always y below f of x satisfies theta x, y. Well, actually, so this polynomial proof transformation provides more information about the first order part of RT22, but at least we can say this kind of thing. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh huh. Do you get do you get connections with your m m large and put and the particular functions that you're? Ah, uh, you mean a uh, so large or den These density? That you get into the total, so if their values below one, so are they do they connect somehow with the the? I mean, it does sort of look like the Baynard function when you iterate. Yes. Yes. Iterate a certain yeah, so this set is just, uh, yeah. Times. Yeah. yeah. Well, so not, 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 not A times. So, so consider infinite set, just uh, A, F of A, F of F of A. Consider this infinite set. Yes, yes, yes. And then inside that infinite set, we try to find an M dense finite set, X. Then that, that way forces F is total. So to force pi two things, it's not so difficult. <laughs> so the, Force and pi two statement, well, combinatorial, finite combinatorial is to force pi two statement. It is not so complicated, but more than pi two, maybe it's more and more difficult. And I guess that's one reason why this original question is still very really hard. Mm. Thank you.